sweet wife has been able to live in dignity for 25 years now because of that death benefit. But to the new agents, you will transform people's lives, not just financially. But if you are sincerely interested in your clients and you do what's best for them, it's like Zig Ziglar used to say, you help enough other people get what they want, you're going to get everything in life that you want. And uh, stick to it. I, I loved um, your interview with Tim Tebow uh, last mm -hmm. night because I've had many setbacks in my life and I've learned most from my negative experiences, but you cannot have a great comeback unless you have a setback. And so don't get discouraged. Uh, if I threw in the towel the first time I had a setback, um, I hate to think what I would be doing instead of transforming people's lives. Don't get discouraged. Hang in there. Gain wisdom and knowledge and go out and change people's lives and you will be compensated financially but in way more uh, impactful uh, ways than just the money. The reward is unbelievable to help people optimize all of their assets and, and that's not just the money. Mm -hmm. uh, that's helping them to have and then knowledge times experience gives you the wisdom. There's no greater payday not financially, but when live or die, those people that you're helping to transform themselves financially, to be able to make sure that they cannot outlive their money in retirement, and that if they happen to die prematurely with what we call an untimely death, to be able to deliver, be there to make up the difference, because I've always learned if you will be responsible and accountable and do everything you can, God will make up the difference. And that's equal opportunities for everyone. Instead of just, okay, I'll bail you out. And that's the equal distribution method. I'd rather leave behind to my family how to fish than just dumping a bunch of fish in their lap. Because then they'll be fed for a lifetime. Other than that, I don't have any strong... But at 25, 26 years old, starts funding a bunch of policies. Mm. And he leaves the league and he says, the banks wouldn't give me uh, money, but I took money from my, my, my life insurance policies yeah. to fund my Orange Theory gyms. And I made more money in my, or, my 50 Orange Theory gyms than my entire playing career because it was funded by... Oh, yeah. I love Orange Theory. Theory. Have you ever... Oh, yeah. 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 These soccer moms are pretty, they're, they're like pretty competitive. I was trying to keep but, up but it's orange. true. The, the smart people, I, I did a YouTube recently, uh, why uh, multimillionaires, wealthy people are buying more life insurance than ever. They have the money. Yeah. It's because they want their money in an instrument that will accumulate tax-free. They can access, access it tax-free when they die of blossoms and transfers tax-free. Nothing else does that. Yeah. Uh, and often we've referred to, you know, Walt Disney. He saved Disneyland uh, by using access cash free uh, to the cash free. as a parent oft times we think we're helping our children by giving them everything so when they said my kids will never have to work as hard as i did i'm going well wait a minute here you just talked about that's what made a man out of you so do you want to take away all of those opportunities okay and you start accumulating this money and then pretty soon you die because most we, uh, most trust and wills it's like as soon as you die chunk 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 into food or whatever mm -hmm. but uh, you know the fact of the matter is there's things in life even more important than the money but that's why so many institutions will choose to put your money in a bank into an insurance company because they're rock solid as far as their uh, liquid reserves does that make sense for sure yeah I'll ask you a question Doug. Right now, with the you know, exposure to what's going on in the stock market, GameStop, and everybody was purchasing yeah. through Robin, you know, through the Robinhood app, what would you tell them about how to establish your careers? You've done this now for 47 years. How would you tell them to get their business up off the ground? First of all, congratulations. Uh, you have no idea how much of a meaningful transformation you will create for your clients. And if you take this serious and don't listen to the naysayers and um, you begin to learn, empower yourself with knowledge,
their kids all to have more than they had, but talk about equal opportunity. Before I let you go, can you share that one thought? What do you mean by that? Yes, uh, and as you know, I'm very passionate about this. My goal has always been to make sure that future generations can learn from the mistakes that I've made. And that's why my story is a long learning curve. Um, I want your story to be a fast power curve. Uh, and when I... Bitcoin doing its thing, so many shiny objects. If I'm a young person right now, if I'm in my 20s and 30s, the last thing, just like this Super Bowl uh, athlete we're talking about, the last thing he was thinking about was purchasing life insurance is the first thing to establish his financial home. What would you say to the person out there, the 20 or 30 year old that's watching this right now, that in spite of all the distractions and all the shiny objects they can put their money into, why should they start with insurance? Very good question. I was as calm as could be. None of my clients were losing money. How about uh, uh, even in 2008? No, I didn't lose a dime. My clients didn't lose a dime. Uh, they may not have made very much, but the next year, the first 90 days of 2009, most of our clients locked in gains of 16%. Uh, the, the cap after a year, not losing a penny. From 2000 to 2012, many of our clients doubled or even tripled their money tax-free. Most Americans were barely getting back the original money they started with. Once you get your financial house in order and that foundation there, you can go play all you want. And I can assure you, you might get rich on one or two, but most of them are going to fail and collapse sooner or later. The cryptocurrency, it's, it, I, I've watched it. I saw it when Bitcoin first came out. It's been pretty incredible, but at the end of the day, there's nothing backing that thing. It could collapse in 24 hours. Now, if you, God is trusting you enough to give you this challenge, and don't be a clam on the bottom of the ocean just waiting around for plankton to float to you. America was built on an eagle on a flagpole, okay? That's right. I want you to respond with all your ability instead of taking the victim role. I want to give you equal opportunities and you come up with as much as you, you respond with all your ability, which is what, what the word responsibility means. And then grandma and grandpa will be Christmas. A couple of weeks later, they're watching uh, it begin to emerge in the measure of its full creation as a monarch butterfly. And I warned them, what will they be tempted to do when they see it struggling mm. to help it out? If they do, what happens to the butterfly? It dies. So, Grandma and Grandpa, Mom and Dad, we don't want you to die. So when you're struggling, deem it a privilege that values out of vision search block. J.C. Penney did it. Ray Kroc and McDonald's did it. Uh, David uh, Walker is the comptroller of the, of the um, uh, General Accountability Office. When he left the Obama administration, he said, I'll tell you where to put your money in max-funded universal life. Because he saw how critical the country was. We came so close to a financial collapse in 2008. And he said to America, this is where I put my money. Why is that? Is it because of the reserves, the, the promise? And the insurance industry would be the last domino to fall if things got really bad. Okay, You'd have so much forewarning because the banks would be uh, uh, collapsing. Uh, in the Great Depression, 80%, uh, real estate dropped 80%, a lot of real estate. Banks went under, 40% never uh, reopened again. Not one legal reserve insurance company went under the Great Depression. They came through with flying colors, crediting 25 3 3.5%. So we would have so much warning if that... It, if the economy is ready to collapse, I'll do this, this, this. They save this much. Uh, if, if they contribute, if they come up and have some skin in the game, they sacrifice, they get good grades, uh, then uh, I might match them 50 cents on the dollar or a dollar for a dollar. But it's, it's giving them a hand up instead of a hand out. I taught this to our grandkids at Grandpa's camp by giving all of the grandchildren little jars with caterpillars in them. And they watched in awe as the caterpillars made their cocoon. There were 100 more were on the brink on the watch list. And not one legal reserve insurance company went under it. They had a little bit of a, a run on the bank thing like AIG did because of the mortgages and so forth. It was, uh, they were able to, uh, they couldn't call all their mortgages due instantly. But there's always in the, um, the legal reserve insurance industry, uh, you cross insure, which is way better than an FDIC. FDIC technically went broke when they bailed out the savings and loans. 
So <clears throat> one insurance company uh, not only what you want, if you start chasing after the get-rich-quick things and so forth, and let me tell you, I've been around the block. I've seen many of them. And uh, it's okay if that's what you want to play with, but not until after you've established uh, a foundation. You want a rock-solid foundation where you put your serious cash, where you know that uh, when you sock away this money, you watched my sons and my son-in-law begin to grasp this and I, I didn't pay them, they didn't fall into, you know, they, they actually worked for nothing for the first couple of years and they learned by osmosis and yeah. so forth. I wouldn't pay them, you know, my son <laughs> edited my book and what have you. Okay. But <clears throat> it's because, do you want me to be honest or gentle, Matt? Honest. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. I thought so. <laughs> when I would meet with people and they were highly successful. God does not give us equal distribution of blessings, let's say of health, to all of us, regardless of how some of us may choose to abuse our bodies. Our Creator gives us equal opportunities, not equal distribution. So when I began to help people uh, set up their, their trust and their family bank under equal opportunity, then my children, my grandchildren, they have to have some skin in the game. If they have the confidence to be healthy, uh, to not ever have to worry about the money because now they can go out and be uh, with their family. Uh, they can have health. You, 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 many insurance agents never really get their arms around the, the impact that they have on people's lives. So stay with it. Don't get discouraged um, you, as you begin to progress and you got your money out of your insurance policy. If the American dollar became worthless, what good would it do to have your money? See, the last domino to fall would be the insurance industry. Uh, you can't buy, uh, live on gold and silver. You can't eat that. Mm -mm. So I choose to put my serious cash in the last domino that would fall. And if that failed, the American dollar would be worthless anyway. But you want it in a, in a, in a position of safety and liquidity so that you can convert it to gas and groceries. Or what the attorneys were like, <clears throat> uh, if, if, if we had to do it over again, we'd rather go out and do what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> The, my last question, when, when, when you're talking about what I stumbled across this industry selfishly, I was just looking to pay the bills. I could get involved, make a paycheck, it was versus mortgages or versus this. But I really started getting into the meaning of the business, and that's what led me to your book in 2005, which is Misfortune 101. And I fly to your office in Salt Lake City, and I realized, I think I. And uh, I would often ask. A question so how did you go from rags to riches how did you achieve this empire and they would begin to tell me their story about how they started out from scratch and so forth just like I did at Kentucky Fried Chicken making a, a dollar an hour and so forth and uh, then they were a super successful working their entire lifetime and then off times they would say man I have worked so hard um, my kids will never have to work a tax-free death claim and say, here, you, your financial house was in order, like I did when my brother passed away. I never mm -hmm. dreamed he would be using the universal life policy I sold him as a death benefit. I thought we were going to ride Harley Davidson's and, <laughs> and, and go river rafting uh, into the twilight of life. Doggone it, he got to graduate before I did. <laughs> he was just 50 years old. But his feelings on this subject, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so Doug finishes off a strong idea with a punchline, period, at the end. Folks, I hope you've enjoyed this conversation, this dialogue. For serious cash, establish your foundation that's going to be rock solid, that's going to weather the storms and the little, you know, things that go on in the economy and the world, because they come and go. Sure thing, Doug. And Doug, there's a lot of people, as you have saw and witnessed here at our event today, which they love seeing you on stage and you rock the stage. What would you say to the newest person that's getting involved in the life insurance industry? You know, they're a brand new agent, they just got licensed, or they're thinking about getting licensed here in short order. We wanted to make sure it's liquid when you need it. I've learned that lesson. Mm -hmm. It's a lot better to have access to your money and not need it than need it and not be able to get it if it's tied up in your real estate or, or something. 
uh, especially in a market that's going down. So you want to have the liquidity. Number two is safety in this order, safety of principle, and the three is the rate of return. You don't need pie in the sky rates of return to get wealthy. Seven to 10% average returns tax free is incredible. It'll double your money every seven to 10 years. At that point, I realized this is more than just life insurance. You are creating generational wealth. You're creating a legacy. You're your, 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 your steps of meaningful transformation process yeah. was, was, was shocking to me. It's also cool to see your sons, your, your, your boys, Aaron, Emran, and Scott, to see uh, us grow because you know, you're, you're actually building up the next generation. You, you talk about not equal distribution, you want equal opportunity. Right. And it's difficult for somebody with kids because they want... Within 2000. So what happened uh, when we're recording this? We've had the pandemic sure. and uh, the spring of 2020 when the markets went 30%. I can sleep because none of that affects me. You want to have a foundation that is not subject to the whims of the market and all of these shiny objects out there. If you want to chase after those, do that with your discretionary dollars if you have them. You have to pay the reserves, behind the reserves, you know, the, the whole conversation too, because, you know, in the collapse, that one A-rated insurance company failed. You can find out the real estate companies failed, banks failed, mortgage companies failed. Yeah, a lot of people don't understand that uh, the insurance industry, legal reserve insurance industry, is not only the backbone of America, but the backbone of the world. This is, <clears throat> again... If you were to look at uh, banks, in 2008, 400 banks went under. Nine, you capitalize on it in the interim, way to go. But most people, um, they act out of emotion, and then they, uh, they hang on, or when it starts to go down, then they sell low. And it, it's a lot of emotion. I don't have to worry about it. When I, <clears throat> in 1987, October, when the market Black, crashed, Black Monday. Yeah, uh, I was out hunting. And I used to have to run back to the office and field phone calls. Um, as you know, Matt, and you're a great example of this. Looking back, uh, I do not regret one minute being in this business. It's one of the most prestigious careers I could ever choose. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. What were you studying in college, Doug? <laughs> what was I studying in college? I was studying to become an attorney. Yeah. And this was a means to that end. And then money manages billions. One I'm thinking about uh, manages about $3 trillion. That's as much money as the IRS collects in taxes in an entire year. One insurance company, and they manage that much money. Maybe with one skyscraper full of employees. You know how many federal employees uh, uh, spend, you know, it takes to manage, you know, 3 or $4 trillion that the IRS brings in. So <clears throat> this is how I look at it, Matt. When people say... Why do you put your serious cash there? It's because, in my opinion, perhaps, that you could take out your money out of the insurance policy because it's so liquid. Uh, this is where banks put 30 to 40 percent of their tier one assets for liquidity and safety because they asked the five major banks in America in 2008, where do you have your money <laughs> for liquidity and safety in case of a run on your bank? Guess where they had it? 30 to 40 percent was in Boley. Bank owned life insurance. See, it's the owner of the insurance policy that gets all the tax free accumulation of that. But let's say it got really bad and work as hard as I did. Well, okay. And so they would come back through the years, and then when they would retire, they would often come in and um, I'd say, How's it going? And they went, Doug, <clears throat> golly, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what's wrong with my kids. They, they don't even know how to work. <laughs> and I would go, maybe you stole that from them. Ooh. They divided it up and, and it drops in the kid's lap and some of them get this entitlement mindset. When do I get my share? Mom, Dad, will you pay for it? Can I have? And that's called equal distribution. And uh, I'm going to say something here. There's nothing more unequal than the uh, equal distribution to unequals. Let me repeat it. There's nothing more unequal than the equal distribution to unequals. So, um, as a Christian, 